Blue Exorcist episodes 2 and 3. Rin has just found out that he's the son of Satan. And um, his dad, who I guess isn't actually his dad, after all, is uh, leading him like through this over the rooftops or whatever. And all these demons are possessing animals, dead animals, so um, like they're being chased by zombie dogs, basically. So the thug from the previous episode is recovering, and um, they're, he doesn't have any memory of when he was possessed, and they're like, oh, you got in a big fight, and he's like, oh, did I? And he starts getting mad, and he has like this superhuman strength, so I guess he's still possessed by the demon? Yeah, he is, and now he's going back out to look for um, Rin. Rin, meanwhile, has gotten back to the, um, the monastery thing, and uh, they're putting up barriers around it to keep it safe for him, because all the demons are going to be coming there. Dad takes him down to the basement to show him a couple of artifacts to prove who he is. He gives him a sword, and he's like, your demon powers are in this sword. It's more important than your life, You, but you can't ever draw it out of the scabbard. So I guess even though he's twins with Yukio, um, Yukio's body was too weak to absorb the demon power when he was being born. So only Rin has the powers. The demons have made their way through. Um, they crashed a, um, a truck through the door. So they, they give Rin a cell phone with only one phone number in it, and they're just like, go, run away. Once morning comes, the demons won't be as powerful. And all these, like, doofy priest guys are actually huge badasses. <laughs> and he pulls out his shotgun. But Rin still isn't leaving. They pushed him down into the basement, and they're like, just run away, run away. But he, he's like, no, I want to stay. And Rin has all these flashbacks of all these people calling him a demon because he was such a demon child as a, as a kid. And he's like, oh my god, I really am a demon! <laughs> oh, Rin has returned! He's returned to keep fighting. He manages to, um, exercise the demon. And they're like, okay, we gotta deal with... We gotta purify this kid before he gets possessed again. And Rin is getting all emotional. He's like, I'm not your real son and you don't, want even, you don't even want me! <laughs> and he gets a slap across the face for saying something so awful. But now something bad's happening to him! Oh no! After Rin just said something so mean, something bad is gonna happen to him. Oh, I guess Satan has possessed the Reverend. Oh no. That was a really easy process. It was just like, oh no, I feel like Satan is possessing me. Now I'm possessed. <laughs> so Satan's all like, come on, quick, let's go back to the demon world. Satan doesn't seem like a very nice dad. But I guess the Reverend now is fighting back against Satan. Oh, he stabbed himself so that Satan couldn't have the body anymore! Oh no! And Rin is still being sucked into the demon world and he finally grabs onto his sword. And it, he decides to draw the sword in order to save the Reverend. Um, and even though that will turn him into a uh, demon forever, he won't be able to turn back into a human. All it really does is give him fangs and pointy ears and a tail. But he's able to use his power to make the demon world go away, and he can save his dad. <laughs> and then this doofus, Yukio, shows up and he's like, Did I miss something important? <laughs> What's going on? After the credits, there's another scene. Oh, it's a funeral! This is the worst! <laughs> I didn't expect him to actually die! I thought they would have saved him! I'm sad now. <laughs> okay, um... Alright, so Rin finally uses the phone that um, his dad gave him, and like this wacky guy who's like in the most ridiculous outfit, and has, I don't know, can't even explain what this guy looks like, but he is a weirdo, and he's like, I'm here to help! I think he also might be voiced by Law. Another guy is saying that he has three choices, one, let them kill him, two, kill himself, or three, kill them and run away. Instead, Rin is like, no, I want to become an exorcist, and I want to kick Satan's ass. And the guy is like, okay, but I'm pretty sure you're going to regret this de decision later. And that's the end of episode two. We have another episode to watch, so let's do that. So Rin is kind of thinking about, like, Yukio and how stressed out he must be, and it's weird that Yukio is not asking any questions about what happened. So the, the law guy shows up, and he's like, time to go to the academy. Oh, no. The Academy, is that the same school that Yukio goes to? Oh dear. Is this turning into a high school anime? 
So, this guy is not so subtly named Mephistopheles slash Faust. I mean, if you've read that play, then it's it's not very subtle, but he has two different names. So what, is this like Hogwarts for exorcists? I don't like where this is going. So now it's the entrance ceremony, and Yukio is the smartest kid in the class, so he's the representative, so he has to go up and like read this really dramatic speech. And Brin is kind of thinking to himself, like, oh man, Yukio's gonna become a doctor, he's gonna be awesome, he doesn't know anything about this whole demon world thing, this is my problem. And Rin's kind of tromping around, like, wow, this school is so awesome! And everyone's like, what the hell is with that kid? As he's wandering through the halls trying to find the dorm, he's, like, distracted by this puppy, who's like, follow me! I mean, he doesn't say it, but he starts running, and Rin starts following him. Oh, poof! He turns into Mephistopheles. Okay. So, he gets a key, where if he uses it on any door, then, um, he can get to his cram school classes, which is the exorcist classes. For example, try it on this door. And when they go in, it's like kind of a sucky classroom. And he's like, hi everyone, nice to meet you. So the way you can become an exorcist is that you have to get a, a, a special wound given to you by a demon, and then you're able to see demons. And of course, Rin doesn't have to do that because he is a demon. <laughs> oh, snap. The teacher is Yukio. Snap. And Rin's like, um, what the hell? And Yukio's like, I've been studying exorcism since I was seven. So Yukio's gonna bring out a demon so that it can give them each a wound so that they can see demons. And Rin has had enough of this, and he's like, what's going on? Yukio, explain this to me. And Yukio's like, I'm trying to teach, bro. Finally, they dismiss the class so that they can have a conversation. But I think Rin is in the right here. I think Yukio should have told him about this in the car ride over. So Yukio explains that he's known everything since the beginning. Um, when they were born, um, Rin gave him the, uh, the demon wound thing so he could see demons, so um, he started studying exorcism when he was seven. Then they accidentally knock over the rotten animal blood, which means that all the demons have been summoned, so they all start attacking. Turns out Yukio's kind of a badass. Oh no! But Yukio's also a dick! <sighs> Yukio, I don't like this. Oh, you just told him to die! Oh, come on! Yukio blames Rin for their dad's death. So it turns out that Satan could only possess dad, um, the Reverend. Um, but the Reverend was, always had, like, super willpower, and so his willpower faltered after Rin yelled at him. So Satan was able to possess him, so Yukio blames Rin for that. Which makes sense. But still, Yukio, come on. Stop being a dick. So then Yukio has the gall to point a gun at Rin. Um, and so Rin doesn't really like that very much. He's like, it's not my fault! Rin was definitely the bigger man just then and dispels the argument. And Yukio has a flashback of his dad telling him that he has to become stronger and um, be able to fight off demons and protect his brother and that kind of stuff. So he's kind of just like... Oh, wow, I became an exorcist because I wanted to become stronger, and you are becoming an exorcist because you wanted to come str become stronger. Oh my god! <laughs> so I guess they're over it. I don't know. I don't know if I'd be able to get over that so quickly. <laughs> but they welcome all the other students back into the room. Oh, and then he finds out that his roommate is uh, Yukio. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of episode three. Everything I've heard about you guys in the comments is that um, this show kind of suffers from being just terribly mediocre. That it, it starts out with some really great ideas, but then it kind of just like pfft, falls apart. And I can see why, because they're kind of forcing this high school thing into it. And for a minute there I was really fascinated with the, with the, with the strained relationship that they were setting up with Yukio and Rin. But then they literally just got over it after one minute. I wish that that had been an arc, because that would have been really interesting. I'm not positive if I'm gonna watch this show in its entirety yet. I'll watch a couple episodes on my own and decide whether or not I'm gonna finish the series. So either the next video that you're gonna see from me is going to be a review of uh, episodes 4 through 12 of this show, or I'll be starting a new show. So I'll see you next time for one of those. Bye!